Hey Run Junkies, finding the perfect pair of running shoes is one of the most significant purchases we make as athletes and the options can be quite overwhelming. So I'm here today to run you through that process once again with my 12 tips for finding that perfect running shoe. Finding the right shoe is a process and if you start to consider how much time and mileage you are spending on your feet in those shoes, you want to consider spending a lot of time, energy, and money on investing in that piece of equipment. Only you can make the ultimate decision on the perfect running shoe for you. If you were to ask a hundred different runners what their favorite shoe is, you could come back with a hundred different answers, none of which may be right for you. So it's up to us individually to go through the process of getting fit for the right shoe. So my first tip is to start out with a running specialty store that offers a wide variety of shoe brands. There are running stores out there that offer a brand exclusive option, but then you might be missing out on all the other brands and options that are out there. Also, I would suggest making it a running specialty store and not a general sporting goods store where they offer everything from baseball bats to tennis rackets to running shoes. Employees at a running specialty store are going to have extensive knowledge across most brands and models, if not all of them, and they will be able to help you find the right shoe. That is their job. It's to find the right shoe that's going to fit you and your needs. Which brings me to my next tip. The more involved and more data you can gather in the shoe fitting process, the easier it is to make the right decision for you. At the very least, the shoe store should have a treadmill that you can test out your shoes or at least offer the option to run down the block and back to test out those shoes. But some stores can get more involved than just the treadmill. So they might ask you a few questions about what kind of distances you're running, on what surfaces, are you training for anything, and are you feeling any aches and pains? At my favorite running store, Roadrunner Sports, they put me on a pressure plate. It maps out your arches and where you put your weight. Then they have you run on a treadmill in a neutral shoe, something with no stability post, something with no support whatsoever, just to see what your feet do naturally in a running stride. And it's only after all of that that they finally bring out some shoes for you to try on. And this is where you start to trust your shoe guy. Maybe it's a shoe gal, but for me it was a shoe guy. Because maybe you've heard all the latest about Brand X. It is so amazing and hundreds of thousands of runners love this shoe. So your shoe guy comes out with a big old stack of shoe boxes and Brand X is not involved in that. So what gives? The shoe guy knows the shoes. He just had a sit down interview with you about the kind of running you do and what you need. Maybe Brand X is not what you need. Trust your shoe guy. He has seen your feet. He has seen how you run. He knows every shoe on that wall. The next point I wanna make is to keep an open mind. Maybe you wanna try on Brand X, you can certainly request that, but your shoe guy's gonna bring out maybe four more pairs of shoes from four other brands. And maybe you've been running in Brand Q for five years and he brings that out as well. But as you try on the shoes, you might find that, oh, hey, wait, Brand W right here feels really, really good. Keep an open mind. Maybe be prepared to jump ship to a different brand. The next point I want to make is don't just try on the shoe and stand there and walk around in small circles around the bench. Run in the shoe. If they have a treadmill, ask if you can run on that or run down the block and back. Maybe you have to leave your ID, but you want to get a really good feel for how you run in that shoe. Run around the shoe store, just do laps. Trust me, no one's going to look at you funny. You're in a running shoe store. Here's the thing about this. The shoe store doesn't just want to sell you shoes. They want to sell you the right shoes that you will want to wear. And like I said before, the final decision comes down to your personal preference. On my last refit, the guy brought out five pairs of shoes, one of which was the brand that I've already been wearing. Three of these shoes were near to perfect and almost indiscernible from one another. And ultimately, I just made a decision to stick with the same brand and model that I've been wearing. As for the shoes themselves, let's talk about how shoe manufacturers operate. They will take a model and basically across all the models across their brand, they will change the modeling and the technology slightly 
from year to year. It's usually on an annual basis that they change the shoe model. Every once in a while, a model change is significant enough to notice, but most of the time the changes are so slight, you don't really notice. And most of the time they're actually improvements on the shoe. Basically, they don't run any differently. But what this means for you is that when you start to see a model change from what you're already wearing, you might go in and get fit for that new model to see if it's appropriate and if it changes too much, you might wanna try on a different shoe. Shoe manufacturers recommend that you replace your shoes every 300 to 500 miles. Now, that is pretty standard, but due to your biomechanics, how you stride, how you run, on what surfaces, what kind of mileage you put on them, that may be different for you. It, you may find that you have to replace your shoes before you hit that 300 mile mark, or if you're one of the lucky ones and you can get your shoes to last well after 500 miles, that's awesome. Which means you wanna track your mileage in your shoes and only use those shoes for running. You can enter a piece of gear into a lot of your training apps. Training Peaks, for example, Strava, Map My Run, and Garmin all have, a, along with many other running apps will allow you to add in a piece of gear and just select that as part of your workout. So when you go in to add your notes in your workout, you can just select, okay, I'm using these shoes for that run. The app will then track that mileage for that shoe. Then after a couple of months, you can go back in and say, okay, how many miles have I been logging on these shoes? This is a great way to track your mileage so you don't overuse your shoes. And this is especially helpful when you have more than one pair in rotation. So after you've been running in those shoes for a while, it's not a big deal, but it is recommended that you get refit for your shoes every 18 to 24 months. It's just like going in for a medical checkup. You wanna make sure everything's working properly with the shoes that you've been wearing. Because of changes in your body, weight gain, weight loss, maybe you've had a baby in that time, maybe you've changed up training style or distance, or maybe you've even been injured. It's best to go back in, go through this process one more time, just from start to finish, just to make sure that either you are wearing the right shoe or maybe you need a new one. So after all 10 of those tips have been implemented, we still don't know if we have selected the right shoe. We're close, but what if we get out, we break them in and we find, no, this causes a problem. I'm getting blisters in my heels or whatever it happens to be. They're not right for you get a money back guarantee from your running specialty store. No reputable running store will stick you with a shoe that isn't right for you once you've broken them in. Make sure you have a money back guarantee if you've broken in those shoes and they still don't work for you. Lastly, don't dismiss the extras. Many running shoe stores will try to sell you a custom molded insole or at the very least an additional insole that just slides into the shoe. While this is an added expense for an already expensive purchase, I personally have found that adding the running insole, the custom molded insole has changed everything about my running. Most of my aches and pains went away when I started using the custom molded insoles. The difference between the factory molded insole and the custom insole is basically this. This is the factory molded. This is the custom molded. This is like a piece of paper. This is like a cradle for your foot. Look at that. That fits my foot perfectly. The reason for these is that the bottoms of your feet are making the most contact with the ground. You want to make sure that your shoes are working with you and, not, and you're not fighting the pavement every time you strike the ground. I highly recommend a pair of these if your shoe store offers these or at least some kind of built up insole that you can just add in. These are custom molded for me. Yes, it is an added expense, but what I did discover is that these will last a thousand miles. They will outlast two, maybe three pairs of running shoes for you. Okay, that was a lot of information, I know, but the bottom line is this. We spend so much time on our feet and if we have improper equipment, it's just going to compromise our running health. Don't settle for less than the best for you and your journey. So take care of yourself by getting the right shoe. For more information about my personal running shoe refit, please check out gofindyourawesome.com for my most recent blog post. If you wanna see how I went through this process the first time around, check out these two videos right here. Don't forget to subscribe for more great stuff from Running With Grace, and if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. That's it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go find your awesome and your perfect pair of shoes. Until next time, happy running.